Welcome to MH2801 video segment on the evaluation of proper integrals using the method of contour integration. So consider a, an integral of the form i equals to an integral from 0 to 2 pi d theta over 1 plus r cos theta. Now it's important to note that this integral is from 0 to 2 pi which is one period of the uh, periodic part of the integrand function. This is the periodic part of the integrand, integrand, integrand function and the integration is over one period or more, it, which is, is uh, usually more is not so good as well. Uh, it's best that it is 0 to 2 pi over one period. If it's 0 to pi, then we have to some, find some way to uh, make sure it is from uh, over, extends over one period. So if you see that this is 0 to uh, pi, then maybe it's possible to also say that uh, the, you know, from minus pi to 0 is exactly the same integ integral value. And therefore, you can uh, make up one full uh, period of the integrand function. Now, now that we have observed that uh, the, the integration is over one period of the integrand function, we can, uh, we can also observe that this comes frequently from averaging okay for example if we have a, a periodic function we want to average it uh, this this is what we, this is the kind of integral that we might write down uh, for other functions that we need to eat in, in so this is a averaging over angle so over uh, theta sometimes you'll be averaging over time in which case we will have a omega t so omega t in this position and then this instead of d theta will be dt and instead of uh, integral from 0 to 2 pi will be the integral from 0 to capital T which is the period of the uh, integrand function, a function of time. Now let's go come back to this particular integrand uh, integral and try to evaluate it. First, uh, we should observe we have to first convert it into a complex contour integral and as, as we said, you know, we, we, the, for this kind of uh, finite proper integrals, we will convert it into a circular contour and the way to do that is to first observe that cosine theta is equal to one half ei theta plus e minus i theta and therefore, if we let z equals to ei theta, which means that, of course, the modulus of z is equals to 1, and also dz is equals to i ei theta d theta. Okay? Uh, or alternatively, uh, d theta is equals to uh, dz over i ei theta, which is dz over i z okay so this is uh this we therefore we're going to substitute uh whenever we see cosine theta we're going to write cosine theta as okay one half z plus one over z and therefore the integral will become an integral from zero to two pi uh d theta is dz over i z we'll leave that for later so for now we have 1 plus r over 2, okay, z plus 1 over z. This comes from the cosine th theta, and then we have dz over iz. Now if we multiply, if we multiply this z inside here, uh, we will obtain, we will get an integral from 0 to 2 pi of dz over okay, i and then here we have z plus okay uh, r over 2 z square plus 1 so we can uh, write this down more explicitly this is 1 over i the integral from 0 to 2 pi of dz okay uh, now let's uh, Uh, in fact, why don't we why don't we uh, move the r r over two all the way out so that we have uh, 
show that we have uh, 2 over IR, okay, this is uh, I over 2 uh, in the denominator, and then we will get uh, Z square plus 2 over R of Z plus 1. Okay, so this is the, uh, this is a, this is what, up to this step we will have uh, succeeded, up to this point we have succeeded in point number one, which is conversion of the, uh, the real integral into a complex contour integral. Now what is the next thing we need to do? The next thing we would need to do would be to find the uh, poles of the integrand function and that is the same as finding the zero of this quadratic polynomial. So let us uh, clear the page and uh, write that down write down that polynomial that we that we need. So it's z square plus two over r z plus one equals to zero. This means that okay using the quadratic formula we have z equals to minus two over r okay plus minus square root of 4 over r square uh, minus minus what minus uh, 4 times a times c so that is uh, 4 and then divided by 2 so what we then have is minus 1 over r plus minus square root of 1 over r square minus 1 Okay, so uh, if we bring the 1 over r out, if we bring the 1 over r out, this looks a little nicer. This will look like uh, uh, 1 over r minus 1 plus minus square root of 1 minus r square. And obviously this, uh, this root here can be real uh, or it can be uh, imaginary. Uh, or complex depending on whether r is larger than 1 or smaller than 1. But what is important is that the complex contour has already been chosen. We can't vary the complex contour anymore. The complex contour chosen is the unit circle. So this is c which is mod z equals to 1. This has already been chosen. So in order for the complex contour integral to yield any non-zero value, one of these roots must be inside the complex contour. So which one can it be? So minus and minus. So even though this can be, uh, let's say if this is not complex but it's a, it's a real number, then minus of minus is definitely going to be, uh, let me see, let us see, do this carefully. Let's, let's argue this carefully. So if, okay, if r is less than 1, okay, uh, or actually the absolute value of r is less than 1, then obviously square root of 1 minus r square is real, okay, and it is uh, of course greater than 0. So minus 1 minus this is uh, bigger than, so minus 1 uh, minus square root of 1 minus r square is of course uh, less than minus 1. And what is more, 1 over uh, absolute value of r, because r is magnitude is r is less than 1, this number is bigger than 1. So the two factor conspire to make, to make the negative root, which is z uh, minus, is uh, outside of the unit circle. Okay, whereas z plus uh, is inside. So we mark down z plus and z minus. So minus one plus. So if uh, so, let's say this is plus and this is minus. So this is z minus and this is z plus. Oops, not z plus one, but z plus. Okay, z plus. Ooh. Okay, and therefore, when we evaluate this complex contour integral, we will just need to uh, evaluate the residue at z plus. So now that we have the roots, that is, this is step number two complete. Step number two complete. Next, we need to find the residue and apply the residue theorem. So let me clear the. Uh, let me note down the uh, 
expression for z plus and then clear the screen. So z plus is of course equals to minus 1 over r, okay, uh, or rather plus 1 over r minus 1 uh, plus square root of 1 minus r square, okay. So this is z plus. Now, uh, in the third step, we need to evaluate the residue. So what is the function? The function f of z is, the integral function is 1 over z minus z minus and z minus z plus. So if we want to evaluate uh, uh, the residue at z plus, what we need to do is to make use of the shortcut formula, which is, say, uh, which is multiplying first uh, f of z by z minus uh, z plus. Okay, sorry, uh, this is not what I want to do. Okay, uh, multiplying the integrand function by uh, z minus z plus and then evaluating at z equals to z plus. Now if we keep take note of the, this particular form of f of z, we know that after multiplication by z minus z plus, we're left only with 1 minus z minus z minus evaluated at z equals to z plus, which is equals to 1 over uh, z plus minus z minus. Now, z minus, okay, we, have, we, did, we didn't write it down, but it is actually equals to uh, this expression, uh, 1 over r of uh, times minus 1 minus square root of 1 minus r square, and therefore, therefore, uh, z plus minus z minus will be equal to this minus this, and we can see that uh, those that have um, the same sign, which is minus one here, will cancel. So this, when we when we when we when we subtract z minus from z plus, the minus one over r will subtract will will will, will disappear, and then we will end up with one over r, or actually two over r. 2 over r and then square root 1 minus r square. Okay, so in this 1 over 1 minus r square, what we will have is we will have r over 2 square root 1 minus r square. So this is the residue at z plus. And then finally, we apply the residue theorem. We apply the residue theorem, which tells us that the integral from 0 to 2 pi of uh, d theta 1 plus r cos theta is equals to, of course, conversion into the closed contour integral uh, 1 over uh, 1 over 2i. I think that's correct. Right? 1 over 2i and then uh, dz over uh, z square plus 2 over r z plus 1. So this will be then finally equals to 2 pi i times 1 over 2 i and then times the uh, a minus 1 times uh, d, d times uh, r over 2 square root of 1 minus r square and this will therefore be equals to cancel, 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 cancel. We will get uh, pi over 2 r over uh, square root 1 minus r square. So this is the answer that we... Uh, so is there a pi that I'm missing? This is answer looks different from what I have. Um, in any case, you can always go through the lecture notes and check um, maybe what is the step that I've done wrongly uh, because I did, don't have the benefit of going backwards to look at what I have written. Okay, so you but you can do that. So this is roughly speaking how you would do the complex contour integration for a function uh, that is for a proper integral.